Good morning, this is Homeschool Christian Mom, and thank you for joining me this morning. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I didn't realize it was after 10 already. I, we've been talking this week about chores and getting your house back in order, especially after the holidays, but also as a life reset. It's very unnerving to me to have the house be a complete mess, and every now and then we used to take a little what we would call a mental health day and get things back in order. And it didn't mean we didn't do any school that day. It just meant we took some extra time to get things organized. I made very specific sheets for the children so they would know what I expected when I asked for a clean room. If you tell a child, I want you to clean your room, they have a completely different expectation than you might if you were cleaning their room. So I listed everything very specifically. Your bed has to be made and the bedspread has to be pulled up so that it is flat. The clean clothes need to be put in your drawers in such a way that you can close your drawers. The dirty clothes need to be put in the hamper. The, the sets of toys that go together need to be put away together. So that meant all the castle pieces need to, to go in the box that said castle pieces. And they couldn't just throw any toys in that box that said castle pieces. So they were supposed to put all their toys away as sets. And the toys had specific places they were supposed to go so that when I said they were put away, they knew where they were supposed to be. And that their, their floor of their room should be clear. It shouldn't have things in, in little corners or stuffed under the bed in a certain way, that the rug had to be clear so that I could come through and vacuum or that they could vacuum. And the books needed to be put in the bookshelf, spine side out, right side up. So I was very specific in my request because then you have the objective, you can check it. Now, if you have a list that's about 15 or 20 things long for your children to do, and this means their room is clean, it's good for you and it's good for them because they know that if they do those 15 things for their room, mom is going to be pleased and you have a list that you can check. And they say, well, mom, I did those 15 things. Why are you checking? Don't you trust me? And you just calmly and quietly say, your job is to do those things and my job is to check it. And this way you are teaching them to be honest. And you go straight down the list with them and you say, okay, you did all these 15 things. I'm very pleased. You're all done. You're finished. Or you can say, I see that you did everything except number eight. I would like you to redo number eight and then you are done. Or you can say, I appreciate that you think you might have attempted to do these, but none of these are done sufficiently. Let's go through them together. You teach them, you make sure they know what is expected, and then they have to do it again. So the punishment isn't something additional. You're just teaching them, this is how you uh, have a clean room. So you have these specific objectives that they meet, and then their room is considered clean. And you're happy, and they're happy because you're not fussing and fussing and fussing and nagging and nagging. They do these 15 things and they're done. And so I had these lists. They were on the computer so that if their list mysteriously disappeared, I could print out another one for them. And they could keep it on the back door of their bedroom so that they were very aware of what needed to be done. And um, so what if you have a child that just refuses, the room is a mess, blah, blah, blah. So I did have a child one time. They were younger, but they were refusing to clean up. So one day I took large construction garbage bags basically and I took everything that was out of place and I put it in this bag and I put it in my room and they went into their room so their room looked clean but none of their stuff was there and they were like whoa what's happened what's going on I said well apparently you had too much stuff to take care of so I took it away um, it's in my room in a bag and they were like wait that's my stuff I need it blah 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 and I said, okay, well, you can earn it back one piece at a time. So we had a chore jar for extra chores that they could do. And for every chore that she did, she could earn one piece back from that bag. 
So it took her quite a while to earn the, that, those things back, but uh, you can imagine that that didn't happen again. So you might have to do something like that for one of your children. It is definitely worth it. And you say, well, why didn't she just go into our room and take that, her stuff back? Why didn't she just do that? Um, we had a, such a situation. She would have known that would have led to very dire and serious consequences. And she would not have done that. Um, if she had, we would have gone through those consequences. We would have taken the things back and we would have started over. She could earn them back one at a time. So I hope this helps you and I hope you're having a good new year getting started. Go outside your house, come back in, figure out that area that really needs to be cleaned for you so that you're not anxious about it. Keep that area clean for a week and then add another area. Have specific chore groups that you can delegate that take 10 or 15 minutes. And then have specific objectives for each job that you want done so that you can delegate it to a child. You can go through the list with them and then you can make sure they're getting it done. You check it, they check it, and you're done so that your house stays clean and you can keep it managed. That's one thing about homeschooling. We don't usually get to delegate other jobs to someone else. There's no maid that comes in. So we need to figure out ways to manage our household and do the homeschooling. I hope you're having a great start and thank you so much for joining me today.